Notice is hereby given of the regular meeting of the Board of Education of the Town of Westfield in the County of Union, New Jersey at 7.30 p.m. on the evening of Tuesday, January 24th, 2017 in the boardroom of the Administration Building, 302 Elm Street, Westfield, New Jersey. The purpose of the meeting is to transact the regular business of the board and any other business to come properly before the board. This is to advise the general public and to instruct that it be recorded in the minutes that in compliance with Chapter 231 of the Public Laws of 1975, entitled the Open Public Meetings Act, the Westfield School Board on Thursday, January 19th, 2017, caused to be posted at the Office of the Board of Education, located at 302 Elm Street, Westfield, New Jersey, and delivered to the Westfield Leader, the Star Ledger, the Westfield Library, Town Clerk of Westfield, Tap into Westfield and Patch.com, a meeting notice setting forth the time, date, and location of this meeting. Dana, can we have a roll call, please? Mike Beeler. Here. Mark Friedman. Here. Brendan Galligan. Robert Garrison. Here. Chris Langhart. Here. Gretchen Oleg. Here. Peggy Astor. Charles Ostroff. Amy Roo. Here. If you could all join me in the flag salute. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We'll start with announcements. Michael, do you have any? I have one. Uh, for all Westfield parents, in response to interest expressed in the topic, all Westfield parents are invited to the free parent education presentation on time management. There will be two sessions, each led by a youth and family counseling <coughs> service professional, uh, Counselor Carol Pedro. They will be held at 7 p.m., uh, first at Franklin School on Thursday, January 26th, and at Tamaqua School on Tuesday, January 31st. Parents will learn effective time management for daily routines, including tips for helping children organize their homework. Thank you. Mark. Yep, I have a few of them. Uh, congratulations to the boys' swim team for capturing the Union County title. Uh, the Blue Devils totaled 459 points, while Scotch Plains Fanwood finished second with 378. Westfield uh, set county records in three relay events, 200 medley relay, the 200 freestyle relay, and the 400 freestyle relay. Individually, David Lindros won the 100 backstroke. Uh, we wish the team continued success. And then also congratulations to the Blue Devils head coach, Jim DeSarno, who has been selected football coach of the year uh, at the state level. Coach DeSarno, uh, who is also a standout assistant principal at Westfield High School, received a letter of recognition from the National Federation of State High School Associations, who wrote, congratulations on being selected to represent all the deserving coaches from your state. And thank you for your many contributions to our youth. That's very nice. And then also, congratulations to Westfield High School's <coughs> Science Olympiad team, which placed among the top six medalists at the January 11th regional competition held at the New Jersey Institute of Technology. Earning medals for skills involving science and technology were Ethan Manning and Samantha Shee for third place in Right to Do It, Sarah Frankel and Lot Seltzer for third place in Wind Power, Natalia, uh, Natalia Zeller McLean and Jack Cunningham for fifth place in electric vehicles. <coughs> Camden Baineker and Lily Talmond for fifth place in helicopters. And Morgan Miofsky, Uma Lakshman, and Sloan Schlosser for sixth place in protein modeling. The team is now preparing for competition at the Princeton Invitational on February 4th and for the state competition on March 7th at Middlesex County College. Uh, we wish the students and their advisors, Westfield High School science teachers, Dr. Dana Phillips and Dr. Uh, Dr. Louis Casagrande, continued success. And if I mispronounce anybody's name, my apologies. That's it. Thank you, Mark. Uh, Amy, do you have an announcement? Yes, I have two also. Uh, congratulations to our 2000, uh, tw 2017 School Geography Bee Champions from Edison Intermediate School. In first place, Max Schialaba, eighth grade. Second place, Fiona Strout in seventh grade. And third place, Ryan Gasson in sixth grade. <coughs> and from Roosevelt Intermediate School, first place went to Dylan Ferraro in seventh grade. Second place went to Zach Ashari in sixth grade. And third place went to Justin Shen in eighth grade. Both first place winners will sit for a state qualifying test to determine if they will advance to the state competition that will be held this April. We wish Dylan and Max continued success. And I also have 
This year marks the 70th annual Washington School Show, with showings on Friday, January 27th at 8 p.m. and Saturday at both 1.30 p.m. and 7 p.m. at Roosevelt Intermediate School. This year's original adaptation, hashtag Hack to the Future, features a 150-person cast, ensemble, and crew entirely made up of Washington Elementary School parents. Funds raised from the show will be donated to the parent-teacher organization to better Washington Elementary, along with several charities. And I just bought my tickets last night, so I'll be there. <laughs> Westfield High School, congratulations uh, to Westfield High School's Model United Nations Club. A delegation of 183 students participated in wide-ranging debates at the YMCA Model United Nations Conference in Hershey, PA, January 6th through the 8th. Following months of research and preparation, Westfield High School received several awards, including the Outstanding Delegation Award that is presented to one school who excelled the best in all parts of the conference. The following individual students were individually recognized. Charlotte Perez and Nicole Eisenberg were recognized as top debaters and named premier diplomats. Jared Greenspan and Marissa Lee received an award for the Outstanding Country Research Paper. Acknowledged for an outstanding first year were Jesse Katz, Alex Joseph, Andrew Capadia, and Brad Hornbeck. Officers for the conference included Ben Halevi, Spencer Fishman, Olivia Kutzman, Victoria Napolitano, and Lucy Hale. Officers elected for next year's conference who will plan, organize, and run committees are Sariana Turamella and Marlo Avedon. This summer, a conference on national affairs will take place during a two-week conference in North Carolina with representatives from all 50 states. Westfield High School will be presented by Victoria Napolitano, Spencer Fishman, Samantha Delaferra, Lucy Hale, and Evan Gruders. Co-advisors Danielle Farabaugh and David Delaferra noted that they were impressed with both the level of preparation and execution of the students' work. The Westfield High School program is run in conjunction with the Westfield YMCA. Thank you. Chris? Yes, one announcement. Congratulations to seven 11th graders who each earned a perfect score of 36 on the ACT administered in December. Receiving a score of 36 in English were Michael Canabarro, Saranya Turamello, Timothy McAuliffe, and our family friend Julia Buccio. Congratulations, Julia. Uh, top scores were earned by Thomas Ohmberg in science, by Carolyn Stockwell in reading, and by Yentine Hu in both math and STEM. So congratulations to those students. Thank you. Um, I'd like to announce that our next Board of Education meeting will be on Tuesday, February 7th at 7.30 p.m. at 302 Elm Street. And the complete agenda will be available online on Friday, February 3rd. Dr. Dolan, do you have an announcement? I do have one. On Monday, January 16th, <coughs> I was pleased to attend the March and the Interfaith Commemorative Service honoring Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. As always, the Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. Association of Westfield planned a very meaningful tribute. And the theme this year was Bridging the Divide. Several of our students won awards for their interpretations of the theme. From the intermediate schools, Mira Mehta from Edison took first place in the essay category. Julian Hamilton from Roosevelt took second. Justin Anderson, Edison, and Ava Pravlak, Pravlak from Edison took third place. In art, Zaria Katz, Roosevelt, won first place. Kyla Turnoff, Roosevelt, earned second. Grace Greenwood, also Roosevelt, was third. From the elementary schools, Liam Morris from Jefferson won first place in the essay category. Jessica, Jessica Dong, Jefferson won second. And Kate Guglielmo from Jefferson and Jared Gao from Tamaquis won third. And Sophia Marquette from Tamaquis earned an honorable mention. In poetry, Nicholas Regis from Franklin finished first. Erin Doherty from Jefferson second. Kava Agnahatri from McKinley third, and Grace Filberto from Franklin received an honorable mention. In art, Emma Clark from Jefferson finished first, Emma Jablanca from Wilson second. The entire fir uh, Tamaquis first grade classes participated in one and they came in third. And uh, Kylie Gao from Franklin and Charlie Jekyll from Franklin uh, received honorable mentions. It was a very well attended service and march and um, it was great to see the community together. Thank you. <coughs> At this point, I'd like to recognize the public for any agenda items only. <coughs> Seeing no one come to the podium, I will turn it over to Dr. Dolan for the superintendent's report. <coughs> Great. So since we are uh, coming upon the end of the um, first half of the year, 
Um, I have a mid-year report on the district goals for this year. There are three district goals. And uh, the first one um, has to do with uh, building resiliency. Um, this goal definitely came from our work on the strategic plan last year, and we heard from parents and community members and teachers about the importance of helping our children not only know how to succeed, but also the importance of failing and knowing how to proceed um, with either f uh, after failure or after challenges. And I'm, I'm thrilled with this goal, and I don't think anyone's ever heard me say that before, but I'm <laughs> thrilled with it because so many people in the community, parent groups and other community groups, have worked with us to build this resiliency. So I think it, it, it's a goal that really has um, resonated with a lot of people in the community. So to briefly go over what we've accomplished so far, we started planning um, what we wanted to accomplish on this goal over the summer, had a number of meetings um, uh, in the summer with administrators who worked during the summer uh, to plan exactly what we'd be doing. Um, we, um, one of the reasons why we did so much work over the summer was um, right as soon as we started, we had a professional development day for all teachers on September 7th, and we wanted to make sure that all of our teachers participated in learning a bit more about uh, resiliency and the importance of it as we develop our next generation. So all the teachers participated in that. Additionally, in addition to a general keynote, we also had specific sessions for uh, people who serve on child study teams and related services, for counselors from grades 6 through 12, and for high school teachers. And I mentioned before that we really had a lot of input from the community on this goal. Imagine, which is the, uh, the local center for coping with loss, they provided workshops for counselors and also for Westfield High School students. As a matter of fact, one of their sessions, they worked with uh, some of our peer uh, support team students, and all of our freshmen were invited to a session on resiliency uh, planned uh, specifically for them towards the beginning of the year. PTOs also jumped right in and offered um, sessions both for students and also evening programs for parents. And uh, even the Junior League of Elizabeth and Plainfield hosted a, a session specifically for uh, raising resilient girls, uh, which was one of the sessions that was really well, uh, well attended, as were many of them. Um, after we had all of the teachers trained in that September meeting, we did conduct surveys to get input as to what else they could use. Actually, what we found from those surveys was the teachers wanted a few more strategies as to exactly how they can help support um, and develop uh, resiliency in the students they're working with each day. And as a result of that, as we planned our February in service day, um, we have sessions specific to different levels, um, for example, teachers working with elementary students and specific examples of what they can do to, uh, to help work with their young students. So we've definitely accomplished a great deal with this and continue to work on it. Our second goal talks about developing a parent outreach program. Um, and having a specific number of online resources and informational sessions. Uh, we asked for representatives from each of the schools to join us on a focus committee, and uh, people were very willing to, um, to volunteer for that, and they were very helpful. Uh, they came, and the, the first thing they had, they had suggestions for just the ease of going onto the uh, district website and how to access information, and as a result, we've added some hot buttons that they've suggested. Um, just to make things a little bit easier for the resources they use the most. Um, we then, as was mentioned even earlier tonight in, in an announcement, the parents gave us suggestions for what information would really be helpful for them as they're raising their children in, in Westfield. And so, for example, one of the ones uh, was mentioned tonight was about time management. You know, they don't want to spend their nights fighting with children about you have to get that homework done, you have to get to this. What, what is a good way to, to address that for students at different levels? And we do have uh, community resource um, youth and uh, counseling services that's helping us with that. And you can see a listing here of some of the different sessions that we have been able to hold. And I'm uh, glad to say that uh, many of them have been really well attended. But we also know there are parents who are so busy, they're not likely to be able to get to events in, uh, in our schools at night for a variety of reasons. They're either working or the other parent is working or, or they're just busy for whatever reason. So we have been able to put a number of resources online, um, including a number of um, videos. We've had videos made of some of the sessions we presented and we've also reached out for uh, videos, some of them are TED Talks, that 
um, work with this, with the issues we have been working with with the parents. And uh, there, if you haven't been on the website recently, if you go into the parent tab, uh, there are a number of different resources, inclu including one section that just says parent resources. So uh, please take advantage of that. Uh, we know people are busy, but even if you can't make it to sessions, uh, there are some resources available for you there. And we've worked very hard to publicize um, all of these sessions in a lot of different ways because we know people access information differently. And so... Um, I apologize. That's my kids trying to find the iPad. We're about to submerge. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can tell them you have it. Yeah. <laughs> they have to. Um, so we do reach out in many different ways to the parents so that they know when we are having sessions and uh, that the fact that they are <coughs> welcome to attend. We've also worked with the PTOs to have joint sessions um, so that, um, for example, the intermediate schools have worked together and some of the elementary schools have as well to combine the efforts for that. We're very happy that as we have uh, put information on the website, and as we've made information available through Facebook and Twitter, uh, we are noticing um, large numbers of uh, people who are accessing that information. So uh, we're very pleased to see that. As is listed on one of the slides, 750 individuals read the announcement on Facebook re regarding raising resilient school-aged children, and over 450 accessed it from Twitter. So we're very glad to see that. And our third goal has to do with teachers using um, online course management as part of their, their lessons with the students. And this has been growing quite a bit as well, and we provided a lot, of, um, um, a, a lot of professional development, ongoing professional development for teachers. One of the ways you can tell that this is growing is people don't even really mention it much anymore. The students are just used to using it. You know, they know that um, in, men, in most cases they are able to find the homework and the work they need to do in, um, online, and they can work on it online. Um, so we started these courses for professional development in the summer and then again on September 7th when we had a professional development day we had teachers in a number of grades involved in that and we also have courses planned for the February in service. We've had 23 um, after school professional development courses to date um, and teachers have availed themselves of that and again we've surveyed teachers to find out um, you know, is, is this professional development helping or what would be more helpful? Additionally, something that's very, very helpful is we still do have the two teachers who um, truly are master technology teachers who work in various ways with the, the teachers and can go into a class and help the teachers utilize a new technology or can help the teacher um, plan for that. So we do see growth in this um, activity. So again, just a mid-year report. We continue to work on them, um, but I, I think we're making progress on all three, and all three of these come from our strategic plan. Does anyone from the board have any questions about our mid-year goal <coughs> status? No. Good. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you. This is not now the anti-bullying. No, that comes up in policies. Great. Um, so moving on, I'd like to ask the board to approve the minutes of our board meeting held on January 5th, 2017, and the private minutes of that same date. Can I have a second, please? Amy, thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? Um, personnel, Mark. I'd like the board to consider personnel items 1 through 27. Can we get a second? Second. Rob, thanks. Uh, Dr. Dolan? Yes, uh, we do have one retirement on here on the personnel agenda. It's the retirement of Lester Highland. Lester has been a valued member of the district's maintenance department for more than 30 years. He is, uh, quite, has been quite the mechanic, and he could always be counted on to do a job well and to go above and beyond to lend a hand. And actually, I can literally point to his good work, because when this room was redone, he was the one who installed the lights uh, in, in the boardroom. Uh, so he will be very much, much missed by his department and by all the schools who benefited from his skills and his talents as well. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Dana, please. Mike Dillon? Yes. Mark Friedman? Yes. Rob Garrison? Yes. Chris Langhart? Yes. Gretchen Olick? Yes. Amy Ruth? Yes. That's it. Further? Um, facilities, Brendan's not here. I'm not aware of a facilities report. Um, I'll just inform the full board that the 
Westfield Soccer Association for the use of temporary lights at Kaler Field will be presented to the full board um, at our next meeting on February 7th. Um, and of course, inform the public of that as well. Long range planning, Mark. Uh, no report, we will be scheduling a meeting uh, sometime at the end of February, so Dr. Dolan and I have to work out a date and then uh, we'll let the board, uh, the rest of the committee know. Great. Policies, Chris. Uh, yeah, the Policies Committee met on February 17th. We discussed the first two items on the agenda here. So like the board to consider for approval, number one, the 2018-2019 school calendar. Can I have a motion? Second. Does anybody have any questions on it? We've discussed this a number of times. Mike Beeland? Yes. Mark Friedman? Yes. Rob Garrison? Yes. Chris Langhart? Yes. Gretchen Olick? Yes. Amy Rue? Yes. Uh, second item is uh, first reading for the following policies, which were discussed on the 17th. 1110, the organizational chart. I'll just call out that we have the new position of Director of Special Projects in the chart. 3144, certification of tenure charges for teaching staff members. 3144.12, certification of tenure charges for inefficiency teaching staff members. 3146, conduct of reduction in workforce in force, teaching staff members. 4125, employment of support staff members. 8330, pupil records, and 8630, bus driver, bus aid responsibility. Anyone have questions? Did you get a second? No, we didn't. We didn't. A second. Oh. Any questions? Mike B Beeland? Yes. Mark Friedman? Yes. Rob Garrison? Yes. Chris Langhart? Yes. Gretchen Olick? Yes. Amy Ruth? Yes. Item number three is the review of the 2015-16 district and school self-assessment report for determining grades under the Anti-Bullying Bill of Rights Act. Dr. Dolan, would you like to comment on that? Yes, thank you. So um, actually, um, for early in the year, at the beginning of the school year, actually I was required to review these numbers um, with the board and with the public. And then after that, it was submitted to the state for their review. Um, they reviewed it, they sent it back, and now I'm required to show it again. These numbers, just so you know, under, the anti under, under New Jersey's Anti-Bullying Bill of Rights, each school has to have a team, and that team has to review a number of different requirements of the law. For example, are the appropriate <coughs> harassment, intimidation, bullying incidents, are, they, are the investigations conducted a certain way, are the reports completed, um, to do all the students receive information on what is expected and what the policy expects. Uh, there are many things that each committee in each school has to review and they have to provide a self-assessment of how the school is doing. So the grades that are um, presented in this report are the grades that came um, from the, the self-assessment at the school level. And you can see, that, yes, there is change from year to year. Um, sometimes when they, when they look at it, they think, I could have done a better job on this. We really have to focus on this next year. And sometimes they see growth. Um, so these have been submitted. These will be on the website um, by tomorrow, as is required by the state of New Jersey. And um, we continue to work on um, making sure that our students are treating each other appropriately. Uh, it's not a job that you do and you complete. It's a job that you continue to work on and it's very important. So um, on the, the last page of this presentation lists the anti-bullying specialists in each building. Uh, parents and students can reach out to them at any time if they have any concerns. We do work very hard on this, but again, it's not a job that's over. We continually work to make sure people are treating each other appropriately and no one is feeling harassed or intimidated or bullied. Just to put it in context, it's out of how many? 70, <coughs> if our district grade is 74 out of? I, I, seven, I, th I used to think it was 76, but now I see there are 77. 77. I think it's 78. 78, but I think that's correct. Anybody else have any questions? We don't need to vote on this, correct? No, I just have to review it. Okay. I have the last item. I'd like to ask the board to affirm the superintendent's decision on HIV incidents. 17R04, 17R05, 17R06, and 17R07 for the reasons set forth in each of those incidents. Can I have a motion? Second. Second. Yeah. Second. Yeah. Mark. Dana. Mike Beeland? Yes. Mark Friedman? Yes. Rob Garrison? Yes. Chris Langhart? I abstain. Gretchen Oli? Yes. Amy Rudd? Yes. Anything else? Oh, I'm sorry. The, uh, okay. the Policies Committee will meet again on February 21st. Nothing further to report. Great. Thank you. Curriculum, <coughs> instruction, and program, I'd like to ask the board to 
consider items one through four that are set forth on the agenda. Can I have a second, please? Yes. Amy, thank you. Um, so everything, uh, I, I was a very bad board member and committee chair and I did not circulate notes. So I'm gonna try and briefly run through. We had two international field trips that were submitted. There are trips that have been taken in the past by high school um, fine arts programs. Um, everything looked to be in order and so the, the curriculum committee was satisfied that it should come to the full board. Um, we approved, we reviewed um, elementary math curriculum and then social studies curriculum debate which is an eighth grade elective and fundamental principles of economics and personal finance which is a social studies elective at the high school. Um, all of those three pieces of curriculum were reviewed in the normal course of our five year cycle. Um, they were updated to make sure that they were consistent with current New Jersey standards, especially in the case of elementary mathematics, and then um, just to, you know, to make sure that they're an accurate reflection of uh, resources that teachers are currently using to teach those courses. Um, second reading, item number three, are those uh, curricula that we've discussed in the, in the end, and then or I'm sorry, that we've discussed previously. And then the fourth item on, on the agenda is the accountability action plan. Um, I think that notes were circulated from Paul about that. If anyone has questions, the curriculum committee took a look at it um, and discussed it with Paul. Uh, it has to be submitted to the state, I believe. Um, so any questions? Great, Dana? Mike Beeman? Yes. Mark Friedman? Yes. Rob Garrison? Yes. Chris Linhart? Yes. Reginald Yes. Amy Ruth. Yes. Um, nothing further. Finance. Mark. Uh, <clears throat> I'd like the board to consider finance items 1 through 16. Second. Second. Rob, thank you. Um, two call outs. Um, uh, first one, we'd like to accept the gift of $3,494 from the Westfield High School PTSO towards the purchase of new uniforms for the marching band. So thank you for that. And also, uh, we'd like to accept the gift of $556.39 from the Franklin School PTO to purchase Lego robotics to be used in the after-school program. So thank you for that as well. Uh, any questions, comments? Dana, please. Mike Bateman? Yes. Mark Friedman? Yes. Rob Garrison? Yes. Chris Linehart? Yes. Gretchen Olick? Yes. Amy Root? Yes. And uh, the next finance committee meeting is uh, tentatively scheduled for Friday, February 10th. If anything changes, we'll let you know. Great. Technology, um, Peggy's not here. I'm not aware of any report. I don't know if any other board members that are a part of that committee are aware of anything to we report. We didn't have a meeting recently. Okay. That's right. There was a tech expo that was uh, scheduled at the same time, so it's the oh, following right. month. Okay. Mark, right. just since you have it in front of you, what's the next? Uh, February 24th, 8 a.m., Friday morning. Great. I'd like to ask the board to note the notes for the record, and I'll ask if we have any unfinished business tonight, any new business, any liaison reports. It's a quiet night. Mm -hmm. Oh, Amy, thank you. I do have one thing I could add. Um, when we met last, I said that the... Um, the members of the PTC, some of them had had a meeting with Brian Ocker back in December about discussing um, improved communication methods for the PTOs and PTSOs in particular and dealing with um, uh, their parent community here in town. Um, they've been having some trouble, we've noticed, sending <coughs> messages from Edline out to parents with certain uh, email addresses. Um, I think Comcast had been problematic, I think AOL at one point or another had been problematic, and. Um, it's a little technical for me, but basically um, uh, there are certain blacklist servers out in the world that sense when there are too many, uh, too many messages coming out from certain websites, and so they'll just lock certain things down. So the Comcast people, in order to try to enhance security for their people, will enlist a blacklist server to help them with that, and they'll say, the blacklist people will say, oh, well, you shouldn't be getting these headline messages, so our people go for weeks without getting newsletters from their PTOs, their PTSOs, and of course they don't know what they're not learning. So that took a little while to get up to speed and figure out, you know, hey, wait a minute, I haven't seen a newsletter for a couple weeks, what can we do about that? So um, it turned out uh, that Franklin School had been leading the way uh, and using um, constant contact to send out their newsletters and had told us in um, a regular PTC meeting that they liked using it because 
it, you didn't have to click on an attachment to get to the newsletter. It just came up in the mm -hmm. content of, of your email, which everybody liked the sound of anyway, um, but also Constant Contact, because of who they are and how they operate, don't have these same blacklist server problems. So by coordinating through Brian Auker, um, we were able to pay one price for the whole district to take advantage of this. And because one email address counts as a, a point of contact and how you're charged, um, it doesn't matter if you have uh, kids at four different schools at four different levels or if you have only <coughs> one kid at one school. Um, you'll, it doesn't cost us extra to do that, which is a lovely feature That's and right. it's pretty economical. So I am happy to report that actually today I got my first constant contact email message um, from the high school PTSO. Um, and just to loop back, it's about a presentation tomorrow night about raising resilient children. Um, so there we go. So um, apparently they're off and running, which is exciting because the newsletter went out on Monday morning the old way, but now they're starting to send messages out the new way, which is really great. Um, so people may start to notice a change in their email boxes that messages will come and look a little bit different. Um, it will say constant contact at the bottom. If you've got several email addresses in one household and you're getting blitzed and you don't want that many, because it's constant contact, you can go to the bottom and unsubscribe. So, um, and just leave one person as your point of contact for those kinds of things in the house. So um, it's kind of exciting. Sort of, kind of ties in with technology, but mostly I, we got there by the PTC, which is kind of fun. So everybody working together, we're, we're getting somewhere. So hopefully it'll help. Great, fantastic. Mm -hmm. I just have one update, Gretchen. Sure. Uh, the Town Rec Committee met in January, and they made a pitch to the Town Finance Committee for the turfing of the fields at Tamaquis. That was very well received, so that project continues to move forward. Great. Any other liaison reports? We may have turf hours, too. Um, Wouldn't be bad. I would like to invite anyone from the public to come to the podium if you have any questions, comments. I just ask uh, when you come up, state your name yeah. and address. Sure. I'm Lydia Kaplan, 245 Clark Street. Uh, okay. I'm Pamela Brooks, 775 Carlton Road. And Pam and I met in Westfield schools in the last century. <laughs> um, in middle school, we graduated in 1979. We raised our children here. We still live here. <laughs> well, after some adventures, we still live here. <laughs> and we co-moderate yeah. a Facebook page um, called Westfield Solidarity for Safety. And it's just a, it doesn't ex it extends elsewhere too. We've represented in other districts um, families who were afraid to speak out on the bullying, the unique type of bullying that their children were experiencing in their schools. So related to sort of the climate that we're living in right now, um, for example, a, a Muslim child was called a terrorist in his middle school um, cafeteria, and the mother, who was clearly in the traditional Muslim clothes, was afraid to come forward. And so by some fluke, we met her, and we went on the board, to the Board of Ed meeting on her behalf. We don't have specific concerns with children today, but we have some general concerns that we'd like to bring forward from our Facebook um, page. page. And Pam's going to deal with, discuss issues with children, and I'm going to discuss issues with adults in the school district. And we won't be super long. No, we won't. So uh, my main interest was, has always been children in the school system. And one of the things that has come clear is that there are children in the school system that feel very isolated and still feel isolated and even feel more isolated in this kind of climate because they feel they are different. And, you know, I can use my daughter now as an example because she's graduated and out of the school system and she said it's okay. <laughs> but she basically said it is not fun or it isn't good to go into Westfield School, especially the high school, if you are different. And that it isn't a place necessarily where you feel that you are part of a whole being, okay? So the isolation that takes place, and unfortunately, 
As Lydia said, I've been here, and it hasn't changed. So I'll use an example. If there is a discussion about race or African-American experience, she would say Every, all eyes were on her. Like, because, but there was a class discussion, but she felt pressured to have to answer that not only from the students that were in the class, but also from the teachers, actually. And, and she felt that was an undue burden that was placed upon her for all those years. And then when you know, I've spoken to students that are in the school system even now, they still feel that way. And so, you know, to, uh, what I would like to say is I would like for us as community reps to somehow work with the school system, see what is available, programs, whatever, to make our children not feel isolated and don't feel the burden of them being from a different group and that word diversity is actually welcomed and welcomed by all because even you have the finest programs. That's why we stayed in Westfield. But I still think maybe we forget that if, you, if, you're the, if you're the diverse one, how, maybe there's more of a feeling that we can't, you know. Pam and Luca, I mean, we went to Edison Middle School in 1974. So we've been through it together. <laughs> but um, yeah, maybe there's a disconnect that we need to be more sensitive to. I'm in the field of education. Mm -hmm. Pam is uh, a physician. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. so one thing that we've also have been discussing, and um, with my work as um, being part of the Martin Luther King Association, so we get feedback from students also, and also out in the community. One student uh, came up with an idea of a safe place idea. And, she, and I'm going to read this. Um, the students, particularly high school students, need to be able to come to the administration <laughs> and faculty to discuss concerning behavior, bullying based on differences, either race, religion, gender, political affiliation, etc., and seek counsel. But still, which is most importantly, be in control of what the outcome will be regarding what happens next and the offending students. Kids <laughs> don't seek help because they don't want to cause or deal with blowback. They know that if their tormentor gets in trouble, they will know who got them in trouble and they will pay a price. And this is an unacceptable risk to many students and therefore they don't seek help. If the student felt that they could talk and seek counsel and then decide with the administrator and faculty person what happens next, more students would seek help, which is probably the best outcome of all. So strict confidentiality is important. Oh yeah, that was the other thing, sorry. Um, the other question where some parents well, and students felt um, that they were not kind of notified that the inauguration was shown on television and that they had no voice in that decision. If as a student they wanted to step out of because they did not want to see the inauguration, they did not have that as an option. And um, the parents also felt the same way. Okay. Okay. Do you want to do you want me to respond? Sure. Or so I, I mean, first of all, thank you for coming and thank you for the efforts to, to kind of provide a safe space for our community to, to voice these concerns, our students. And I, I wasn't familiar with your Facebook page, so I'll go check it out. Um, I don't think that, well, I think that everything that you're saying um, is absolutely true and it's something that we should all be heightened to and I think that we are in lots of ways. 
Um, we participate frequently in lots of conversations within the district about diversity and making sure that those students who are different for whatever reason um, feel included. And it's something that we spend a lot of time with as a board and a community talking about at our strategic planning session and that we are sensitive to. And certainly if there are ways that we can make our schools more welcome um, and, you know, then we need to be having those conversations and we certainly need to provide places for students to feel safe. Um, we're in a really unique spot right now in terms of we're hiring a new, you know, we're in the process of interviewing to determine who the next Westfield High School principal will be. So your timing is great in terms of talking about students wanting to feel like that's an individual who can be approached um, and that it's a safe place to go. And so certainly I know that I will and Dr. Dolan will certainly carry that back as we complete the interview process for that. Um, and then I don't know if, if you, you probably have a lot more thoughts um, to... I do. I, I, some of them are, um, I mean, this is something we do work on. This is something the high school this year has been working on with teachers. That doesn't mean we solved it. I understand that. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to be, um, uh, you know, defensive and say that can't possibly be. Because it, it is something, as I, as I sort of referenced before, it is something we really do work on, really do value and want to make better. But I'm here to tell you, we haven't reached everybody. Mm -hmm. And we, you know, do we look for the students who feel, feel isolated? We do. Do we try to encourage people to come forward? <coughs> and uh, we can't promise they're going to be in charge of the answer, but we can promise if we can be confi confidential, we will be. You know, but how do you, how do you make sure each of the students at the high school or at the intermediate school mm -hmm. believe that? You have to keep working on it. Mm -hmm. So if, if you have ideas as to how we can continue to work on it, that'd be great to, to work. It's another resource. That's kind of um, why we're here, is to mm -hmm. say, you know, we're interested in brainstorming. We know historically that, you know, the, the Gay Straight Alliance and other things that you have in, the, in place in the high school have been fabulous and people really treasure them, but I think there's something shifting out there that we're going to have to pay attention to that's going to be affect things a little differently. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I can understand what mm -hmm. you're saying, yeah, exactly. Um, so yes, if you have some ideas and you want Great. to work, that, that, that really would be fine. Um, yeah. My, I have another concern too, yeah. is not so much about the students, but I'm concerned about our wonderful teachers who, my son's beloved AP teacher in high school was Muslim from Egypt, um, who knows who else, someone with a Spanish accent who some people would like to see sent back and, you know, behind a wall and, you know, Muslims, you don't know what the kids hear and how they translate it and how they um, verbalize, verbalize it. It's re it could be mm -hmm. off, but this is what they're hearing from our leadership and, um, you know, we have leadership now that has a different perspective, and we're, I'm concerned that maybe all those good things that are in place in our schools are going to be defunded in some way, um, and ex and ultra perceived as right. Yeah. So, so I would imagine a lot of people have questions <laughs> about education, and and right. uh, and we'll have to see. I read today that mm -hmm. the federal fund, the federal law, the ESSA, E S S A. Um, that they've uh, just halted the, um, they've been sending out the rules for it, but they've, they've halted that for a while. So we certainly don't have all the answers, but here's right. what we do have. We have all these students in front of us, and the adults in this community are committed to working with mm -hmm. those next generations. We truly are. It, it, this is a topic we deal with, we question. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Pam, when you were talking about, um, um, you know, a student who is, one of whatever, the only girl in the room, the only person in a race, the only person of a religion, if the conversation is about that, should everyone turn to that person? I know it happens, but we try to work with people to say that shouldn't happen. That's not the way you have a conversation. You know? So um, we'll continue to do our jobs. We don't control everything, but, but we will control the way we work with, with students and, and continue to try to make sure we're working with all of them. And, and any, you know, any suggestions, uh, I'll be glad to meet, or I'm sure yeah. that the high school administration, um, we can take other suggestions because it's something uh, we truly, truly do value. And I'm a professor at Kane University, and I work, I'm very close with the woman who runs the Human Rights Institute uh -huh. there. So who knows, there might be things okay. coming out there. But just, Pam and I wanted to come to let you know <coughs> that we're sensitive to these things, and we would like to work with you okay. um, if yeah. there is any possible way. 
And I, I'm again, I'm thrilled that you guys came and, and this doc, I'll just echo what Dr. O'Donnell said. If we can find ways to work together, we definitely should. And mm -hmm. this board is committed, and it has been a, a difficult year in many respects, but to providing a safe place at the high school for everyone of every opinion, race, you know, whatever, to, to, to speak, to say what they need to say in a constructive and environment. And, and we will continue to communicate that to our staff and administrators. And, Gretchen, can I, can I make a point Absolutely. too? Absolutely. I'll, I'll tell you that, and I've had a couple conversations with Dr. Dolan about this. You know, I'm a, I'm a parent of a, of a child of color, and uh, it's been interesting this year, to say the least. And, and there was even an incident on Friday that occurred at the school. Um, and so when I don't know your organization, I'm going to look up and, and get to know you a little bit better. But don't forget about the elementary schools either. Right. Yeah. Uh, she's oh, no. maybe one of five at Wilson School, I think, that may be of color. Uh, mm -hmm. But I could be wrong because sometimes you just look at people and... They may be of color if they don't look it. <laughs> and, Susan, and when you say this year, what and how are you defining well, the year? School year. School, school year. Since she's September. only in first grade, mm -hmm. okay. so that's only uh, time period I have to go off of because mm -hmm. she's only I only have one child, mm -hmm. and um, it, it's been interesting what's been going on. Some of the stories I've heard, not only at both sides, right. uh, that have gone on, and and sometimes I think you know, appropriately so because high school students are in a different place than elementary mm -hmm. school students. Uh, but I have to say, from Principal Malanga to Mr. Yu mm -hmm. to Mrs. Pollard, they've been fantastic trying mm -hmm. to deal with it. Because my daughter's happened from a very young age, has recognized the fact that she's different mm -hmm. and expresses that quite often. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting, uh, you know, how to deal with that. And I'm still trying to figure it out myself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, I, I think that um, overall, I mean, all students are affected. I just used the high school because my daughter was closest, you know, she's graduated. That, but all students from very young all the way through, you know, even in college are affected. So I think it's important to look at each stage and developmentally look at, see, what is, how can you bring race and diversity in the classroom in an accepting way? And then also at the same time, you know, we work with our students and how do you work with <coughs> then stretching that over to the parents. And the teachers. And the teachers, <laughs> yeah. Because, you know, and then what is diversity defined in as your staff and as your teachers? That is also an example of how you can create a diverse, accepting community. You know, um, and in this climate, especially, yeah. we don't want to take steps backwards. And there's like a buzz out there, and kids get the buzz, and they come up with this new vocabulary they never had before, and it becomes delay, it, be, it becomes lethal a lethal <laughs> toolkit of now new bullying language. So, and they see it, and they see it, and <laughs> so I think this is what's really getting us concerned. I, I would say this board shares your concern and mm -hmm. frustration in trying to preach tolerance and diversity and then having that undercut at a national level, exactly. kids hearing things that mm -hmm. don't really fit that paradigm. Right. And we try and be vigilant. We right. talk about it quite often, but yeah. it's, it's, a, it's a battle. You're right. We, and we've done such good things. We don't want them to, to go back. To go back. Yeah. Yeah, so. And there was one other concern that parents have where in regards to what is the policy on teachers making political views or statements in the classroom? So um, we actually worked on that a lot this year uh, because even in the summer, um, it was clear that this was a uh, perhaps particularly contentious election. So before the school year started, um, I spoke with administrators and they spoke with uh, teachers to talk about um, it is not ours to bring our politics in. There, there are times where it's very appropriate to have a conversation about politics in a, in a classroom. Um, uh, there are times where it's not, but there are times where it is. But it's not our politics that we're bringing in. So uh, we, we did focus on that. Now, am I here to tell you I'm sure we got to 100%? Maybe not, but we worked very hard on that um, because it is not ours to to insert our own politics. It is to help students understand how to read different points of view, how to make judgments, how to mm -hmm. defend one's thoughts. That, that's, that's our role. And, it's, and it's, a, it's a challenging role, I will tell you. But, um, but we did spend time on that. Um, I, we usually do when, it, when there's a big election around, but we, we really focused on it this year, to be perfectly honest with you, from early on. From early Is there on. a way that you can like, reinforce that? Um, sure, I did, but I can do it more. Sure. Yeah. That, I think that would be appreciated by many <coughs> parents 
that are concerned about statements that have occurred in classrooms. Okay. Well, if, th if there's anything you can share with me later, I'll be glad mm -hmm. to follow up on it. But we have been, um, actually there were some that were noted that weren't accurate. I don't think they're the ones you're talking about, but mm -hmm. we did follow up on some and then found out that there were mm -hmm. a couple of interesting postings on social media that weren't accurate. Um, and we followed up on mm -hmm. it. So, um, uh, matter of fact, there were a few of those. <laughs> um, and, and they weren't. Uh, uh, so, but if, you, if there are any stories, certainly tell me and we'll follow up because that's an important part of our role, working with the next generation. No, they're not. Or alternative facts, as I would say, mm -hmm. but uh, they are yeah. real. And we have to, this is just a generic, you know, we, we used to be, the, you know, someday you can be president and now, whether, regardless of your politics, there's been language that's been not appropriate and against the disabled and others by the president. I mean, I'm it's going to be hard to ha have our tell our children that you can look up to the president now, and uh, just based whether just based on his bullying styles that are correct. Right? Yeah. So okay. And those are you know those are concerns, and like Lydia said, we'd be more than happy to work with you to figure out. Some. My specialization in graduate school was cross-cultural communication and intercultural um, communication. So yeah. between the two of us, we can figure out something. Okay. All right. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, you. Thank you for your or taking our audience. Did you you want to come up? How are you, Liz? I'm good. I was doing better, but you know, at 50, don't recover as quickly, <laughs> and those round offs of the shadow practicing them put me back in my pooch. <laughs> I thought oh, I could yeah. do it. I thought I was good. I, I felt good, and I don't know, then age just took over. <laughs> Liz Mahalan, 1029 Harding Street, Westfield, New Jersey. I want to thank all of you. I want to start by thanking all of you for your service. You guys do an amazing job. I'm one of the few people who realizes just how difficult your job is because of my involvement on the state level and seeing how the laws change literally from day to day and minute to minute. So I appreciate how quickly you all react to those laws and how kind you are when we are sometimes losing our minds trying to deal with those changes. So I'm just here today. I haven't been here in a long time. I know you guys always get my emails. I send them constantly to you. So I just wanted to update you on some of the things going on locally, state, and federally. Uh, so that you're aware of what's going on. Locally, um, Washington School Show. Sitting out there. It's this Friday. <laughs> it's this Friday night, Saturday. Uh, please come out and support the Washington School. We'd appreciate it. And you'll get to see me do my cartwheel, hopefully without the boot. Um, also, uh, state level. Okay, you have a multitude of things going on. There's actually eight or nine major issues happening at the state level that are very important that you guys are aware of what's going on. Um, one, right now they're discussing funding. And as you know, there's three different funding proposals possibly. You have one from Sweeney and Ruiz. You have one from Prieto, and then you have uh, Governor Christie. So those are three different theories on how um, public education should be funded. Uh, and none of them are aligned with each other. So good luck with that. I don't know how that's going to work out. I wish you the best of luck trying to figure that out. Um, you also have charter regulation changes. They're requesting, um, I'm not sure, I've spoken to you before about charter schools and accountability issues and things of that nature. The state is asking um, that they be more lenient on charter schools and more aggressively um, place more charter schools in more areas. Currently, this, as we speak right now, there are three suburban districts that are fighting off charter schools. Um, Princeton is one of them, one of the top scoring districts. They get a total of $4 million in state aid for all of their students. Uh, they pay $5 million out to the charter school. The charter school is ex asking for an expansion. That expansion will take another $1.18 million out of their budget which means that will be cuts to the district because legally, just so you understand, mm -hmm. charter school budget can never be cut. Only the district can. So you have to understand that. Um, this, of course, creates inefficiencies because you're running two separate systems, two superintendents, two BAs, two attorneys, mm -hmm. so on and so forth. So that's something you need to be aware of. 
Um, the charter school enrollment has almost doubled since 2010 or 11. Um, and they are moving out. You also have um, Highland Park and Old Bridge that are you know, desperately pushing back <laughs> on charter expansions and new charters in their district, as well as some other local districts. I think South Brunswick or New Brunswick is also being pulled in because a charter school can open in New Brunswick and pull from all districts. So that's something you need to be aware of because as taxpayers, that could cost you a lot of money. Um, Changes they want to do is they want to allow uh, charter schools to have access to any unused public school space. Renovations will be paid for by the district. Um, they want to allow, this is something that they're going to make in the regulations, allow charter school students to access all extracurricular activities. You have marching band, they're in it. You have any kind of after school, they will be in it uh, for free. Um, they are also asking that the traditional certification be done away with for charter school uh, teachers, administrators, and um, employees that would normally, BAs, which as you know, BA in, is a very difficult position. Um, I'm putting this out there because also they're unregulated. So for example, success at Chad, um, Eva Moskowitz, her salary is $574,000 a year for her charter schools. And the district superintendent for New York City Schools makes somewhere around 270. Um, mind you that charter employees are all pensioned employees. So if you can call your salary, you can call your pension in essence. So that's another thing for taxpayers to be concerned about. Um, I bring this all up because as you know, our, we just have a new federal appointee, um, DeVos, who is being appointed. And she is fully supportive of these kinds of um, policies. <coughs> she fully and strongly <coughs> believes in charter schools. She fully strongly believes in vouchers. Um, this pulls away from your local districts and it sends taxpayer money to private industries. Uh, this burdens taxpayers tremendously. And in Michigan, for example, where DeVos is from, where she invested millions and millions of dollars to make her plan work, 80% of the, her charter schools are for profit, um, the, the city district where they are went bankrupt. And the state had to bail them out. At first they thought they could just bankrupt the district, but that's apparently against the law. So the state had to bail them out. So it cost taxpayers a tremendous amount of money for that. Um, this is important for us to know because you are the Board of Education, we are the taxpayers, and this is kind of important that we not put ourselves in this position if possible. So I just wanted to bring that up to you. Um, so Michigan schools as a state went from, before this implementation, went from 40, they were ranked around in the 40s, state, you know, uh, nationally, they're now in the 20s. And that's the outcome because what they did was they, by and large, when you divide a community into school districts, you have a school district and you have charter schools, you, you basically pull apart the support for the public schools in a, as a whole because you have two systems. And there was a, a tremendous amount of underfunding overall to all districts. And ultimately now their scores are around in the 20s and 30s in, instead of the 40s, the high 40s. So that's what happened overall in that district. Also, um, there was a promise that $20 million will go to vouchers, which of course will come from your federal tax dollars. Um, Ms. DeVos also wasn't aware that when asked if federal idea money should be used and should, should charter schools, private schools, and district schools be accountable to those standards for IDEA equally? The answer was state and local districts should make that decision, which clearly means she didn't understand the concept of IDEA that it was a federal law. So there are issues that not knowing that and not having a degree in education, never working in education, not uh, having children who went to public schools or herself going to public schools, it's a little alarming. So I wanted to bring that to your attention. Her appointment has been pushed off until the 30th um, due to conflict of interest documents. There was 19 pages of literature that they had to go through or some such thing. So you still have an opportunity if you're interested in letting the public know, uh, contacting your senators on the health committee. So I, from an, a public school advocate point of view, I would suggest for that particular appointment, 
that you might want to look into it and possibly reach out to legislators and let them know your feelings. There are, are over 175,000 signatures asking uh, for the appointment to be um, pushed away. But just so that you know, when if it's coming to you, you're aware of what's going on, state, federal, and local. So I appreciate your time and you're letting me speak on these issues. Oh, ESSA. The timeline for ESSA is the report will be out in mid-February. <coughs> it will be delivered to the BOE um, April 3rd, uh, the DOE on April 3rd. So uh, yeah, ESSA will be around April 3rd is when they're expecting it to go to the DOE. So there's been a timeline for that scheduled. And the only other timeline, um, oh, the district graduation requirements. Do you, I'm, I'm not sure if you're all aware. There are, there's one lawsuit by Ed Law Center right now uh, based on the graduation requirements. And also there is a resolution that was started by the assembly. It's halted right now, but started by the assembly that said that they were out of, out of compliance with the statute and it was directing the um, State Board of Education to come up with better regulations that aligned with statute. I don't know if I said that correctly, but <laughs> okay. So, but <laughs> thank you very much. And I have some papers, I'll give them to you on other things that district can do. Liz, thank, thank you. you. Thanks for always keeping us in the loop. We, sure. we do appreciate it. Anyone else from the public have any questions or comments for the board? Thank you. Feel better. Seeing no one else come, I'd like to ask the board to approve the following resolution that the Board of Education move into private session for the purpose of discussing legal matters and harassment, intimidation, and bullying incidents, and be it further resolved that any discussions held by the board which need not remain confidential and the results of such discussions will be made public as soon as practicable. Can I have a second? Second. Chris, thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We are in private. Thank you very much.